Well, hello everyone and welcome to Friday. We're almost, uh, we're almost at the weekend. Some of you closer than, than I am. I will share my screen. I have shared in the chat our presentation for today. I've also put it in the invitation. So let's see what we've got here. All right. Make this guy. Here we go. All right. Let me get my. That's better. Okay. Hopefully everybody can see my screen. I can't see you. Somebody want to just give me a verbal? Yep. yep. Seeing it. Awesome. Thank you. All right. Our focus for our People Ops FGU today is turnover. Um, something that you as a business begin to focus on after it occurs. And in 2015, there was no turnover. 2016 was a big growth year. By the time that I came in, we were really focused on hiring. And that was, you know, we, we hired 121 people in 2016. And that um, obviously a, a big reason for focusing there. Once we turned over the new year and we began to see a few people leave, it's a natural um, next step to take a look at why people are leaving the organization. And so it was the very beginning of the first quarter that Sid and I started talking about it and we began to do uh, a bit of research and that's where we started exit interviews and some of the other pieces of uh, research that you do as you start to, to lose your workforce and, and try to understand better why that is. So I'm going to take you through um, some background on what turnover uh, means to me as a people ops leader what it means to the business and what you'll find out when you start to, to go out and maybe do some research or, or take a look at what other people are reporting as turnover. There are a number of terms that you'll see. Turnover, um, termination, separation. These are all uh, words for voluntary or involuntary loss of the team, of your team, your staff. Churn. Something that is um, a term I've used for a long time, it's an internal focus. It's actually a positive or a healthy turnover, and that's when someone either leaves a department to go somewhere else to take another position as a transfer or a promotion. Um, it's essentially if you looked at everything as turnover, when you lose someone out of the position that they're in, that would be the internal version of someone leaving. Attrition is when you lose someone due to a downsizing event um, or a, a right sizing event, otherwise known as, uh, or someone retires. It's natural. It's a natural reduction in the business as well as a business decision. Most of the time, you pull attrition out of your turnover because it is a business driven decision. And what you're looking for in turnover is why people are either voluntarily or involuntarily leaving. Other terms that you'll recognize down the road, termination, separation, resignation, when somebody voluntarily leaves to uh, um, either go to another opportunity or uh, for, for reasons that you wanna dig into. Downsize, right size, layoff, those are all terms that are similar uh, and they are when you remove people and positions from the business. Um, because you've overhired, because you have a loss of work, maybe a contract ended, because your revenue drops and not something that can be recovered quickly, but a drop that will, will then potentially um, disable us from paying the workforce, um, or if you close a location. Reduction in workforce, it's another, it's a subterm of that downsize. That's when you eliminate positions you do not intend to replace. That generally comes with a closing of a location when you reduce the workforce. You can have healthy and unhealthy turnover. Believe it or not, there really is healthy turnover, uh, healthy terminations. Terminations that are for um, poor performance, when you lose or exit people from the business who are poor performers, you have uh, you've opened a path 
for people who are otherwise engaged and high performing and take accountability for their work. If you have ever been in a position, I think we all have in, in some job somewhere, where you've had someone that appears to be not producing and yet they keep their job, that's very frustrating. It can become infectious if it's not managed well. It's frustrating for not only peers, but management, right? Because we're not getting the work done that we need to get done. We don't have the people or the engagement that we're looking to, to create a successful organization. Poor performance is costly to the business. Turnover is unhealthy. We worry about turnover. It's costly when you lose institutional knowledge for any period of time. Someone who leaves who was the only one who did their job. That's why we try to look at ways to cross-train the organization or have someone as a uh, understudy, if you will. Missed deadlines. Projects suffer. Slower progress and missed deadlines can be costly to the business. Training costs, we have to train someone else to do the position, whether it's a new hire or someone else in the, in the organization. We know it adds stress and strain to peers who have to take up the slack while the position is vacant. And it impacts morale and engagement. Um, if people are worried about why people are leaving, then morale begins uh, to, to suffer. It is essentially a distraction to the business. All right, let's talk about the calculation. There are, when you start looking out on, on Google at turnover, you're gonna find different formulas and different formulas paint different pictures. We considered three different formulas when we were um, uh, coming up with the right calculation for the organization. We went with a calculation that I brought to the business from a number of years that, that I've used it. And, and the reason I really pushed for this is it is a microscope approach. It digs down and looks at every person who was hired or who is here who had the opportunity to be terminated or to leave the organization. And therefore, it really looks at um, every reason. And, and um, where other formulas use averages, you lose track of, you can lose track of people that uh, when your data set is not the same and you're not looking at apples and apples, why people leave versus how many people left. The numbers begin to get skewed and they don't pair up very well. And, and that's why I really pushed for this formula. Um, the formula is, or what you need to get to, to create the formula is the starting head count for your reporting period. And reporting periods can vary. I'll talk about those in a little bit the total number of hires in that same reporting period and the total number of terminations. I'm gonna use the word terminations, meaning termination, separation, turnover, right? All voluntary and involuntary leaves. And that is a, a number that you wanna separate out. You wanna have the total and you wanna have the each individual type of termination to give you the most accurate data. You're gonna divide that number of terminations into starting head count plus the number of hires. So you have a starting number of 39, you add 121 hires throughout 2016, and you divide um, six into that to get your voluntary termination. We had six people leave the organization. Those are the true numbers. We started the year of 2016 with 39 people. We added a total of 121. We had six people leave for voluntary reasons. That gives us a a voluntary turnover of 3.75%. The other calculation here is the full year. FY is full year, and uh, it is all types of turnover. The next slide is a bit overwhelming um, for, for people who are not accustomed to the data, and, and uh, this is something that Brittany and I have been working on creating, um, and it's got a lot of information on it. Happy to share it with you, and I'll, I'll try to cover a, a quick review of it, and then um, I think this is something that I, I want to continue to publish so that everyone is, um, so that we keep it transparent, right, so that it's, it's uh, out there. So we, we looked at, since we were already past a full year of data, that's a great data set to grab because it is your first component or your baseline for year-over-year -year turnover. So it's the first time that we've had that opportunity to gather that. In 2016, as I said, we had a full year of turnover of 9.38. I highlight voluntary because it's what we really, what, what your people ops team really focuses on the most. There, there's reasons to focus on each one, and I'll tell you a little bit about why that is. 
but we looked at voluntary 3.75 and involuntary 5.63. And that's simply doing the formula that I gave you, starting head count of 39, the additions uh, of 121, and then dividing that out by 15 would give you that full year. If you look at that voluntary number, we had four of the voluntary people that, that left six people. We had four males and two females leave. We had, and if you look at then, we drilled down as to what that means within that population. So there were 35 males that started the year and 94 hired and four left, giving us that 3.1. And same with females, right? Uh, female being higher because our population is, is lower. The next section is by quarter. So you have a full year, that's great. Right, that's one component, but you do need to drill down and drilling down gives us more detail of potential cycles or what happened in a particular quarter that we can go back and take a look at to avoid in the future. You'll see I have quarters, one, two, three, four. We also have the FH is first half. So when you get the opportunity to measure a larger portion of your data, the first half of the year, you take that opportunity so that you can then project out what the full year um, turnover would look like. Then at the bottom, out of the full year termination details, we, we then break down a couple of different things we want to take a deeper dive into. Why are people leaving at the time that they leave? We measure zero to three months, three to six, six to 12, and one year. We're a young company, so these numbers are going to be bigger in the at the start, right? Six to 12 is going to be your, probably your biggest category because we haven't been in business that long. The categories I'm more concerned about are the zero to three and the three to six, because those tell us that our hiring decision might not have been a good one, that we didn't um, completely convey what the work was going to be like or what the environment was going to be like. So those are things that people ops focuses on to begin to figure out what can we do better and how, you know, what, why did we lose that person? That's why you have an exit interview. Um, that's why we do stay interviews, right? Because we want to understand what will engage people. And, and from that, the, those numbers, then the total 15, we had six leave, as I said, voluntary and nine involuntary, a total of 12 males and three females left. A lot of information there. Popular metrics that we are going to begin to track or we have already started tracking. When you look at turnover, you can look at monthly, quarterly, annualized, a rolling average, or a year over year. And we're going to look at a little bit of all of that as we go forward. Different measurements um, give you different, uh, different reasons for doing that. Monthly is when you find some kind of a trend that you are concerned that it's cyclical, right? Did something happen in a particular month that, you, that sticks out? That's a bit of drill, you know, the drill down is a little bit more than what we need right now. We can do that, but it doesn't tell us a lot. So we chose quarterly and we have the full year that we're looking at. Because we do quarterly, we can do a rolling average really easily. We dig down into voluntary turnover, as I said, because it talks about engagement. It talks about are your programs, is your compensation uh, what, what is it that keeps people here? What is it that, that potentially is allowing people to make the decision to walk away on a voluntary basis? We look at reasons specific to why people left, the trends, the patterns. We're going to take a look at tenure. Tenure talks about uh, when people depart, right, and how long people stay. You want that tenure to be high. We're too young of an organization at this point to really have a high tenure, right? The, the most tenure, um, congratulations, is uh, Jacob Vosmer, I think, is, the, is our highest tenure. And, and um, then we have, because of the 121 hires, we have a lot of very low tenure. We've got to balance that out. We've got to stop growing as much as we do in order to get a really strong tenure number, but we can look at that tenure number over 2017 and begin to see if it's, if it's staying low then we've, we potentially have something to take a look at. So again, that, that microscope just kind of goes to a different, um, a different uh, screen. Involuntary. We look at involuntary because it's the quality of hire. If we're not hiring the quality of people that we need in the organization and we're, we're uh, actively managing those people who have poor performance out, then we probably didn't consider something. We then dig into looking at a profile of the people who left and the people who are very successful and why 
uh, they are successful. So we can start to compare and we can start to recruit for the skills that we need to, to maintain um, a high performing uh, group of people. And we look at the cost to the company. We can measure everything, right? How long does it take us to recruit a replacement? How long does, uh, how much do in productivity do we lose when someone uh, leaves? Those are all costs to the company that talk about how much turnover costs. It is said that turnover can cost you anywhere from 50 to 400% of someone's salary, depending on the type of position, how hard it is to fill, how much that position means to the business. One of the things, so, so I gave you some numbers and you say, okay, well, Joan, what does that mean to me? I don't, I'm not in your business. I don't know what that, uh, if it's good or bad, are we higher or are we low, right? So we, we went for comparables. This is one of the reasons it took me so long to actually get this information together and get it out to you because searched high and low, believe it or not, there wasn't a lot of comparables. There certainly wasn't comparables that I, I was looking for for tech startups. And I went digging. Um, Again, differences in formulas cause variations, right? So if you're looking at turnover, be careful out there in the world because it can include attrition sometimes and not. It can be the three different formulas. If you find a formula uh, and you know that's what people are using, but, but we, instead we use my formula, my formula is probably gonna be a little bit lower than an average turnover, but it's, in my opinion, it's, it's more um, exact. Uh, but it will be different. So you have to take that into consideration. There are three different links here that I gave you. Um, the first article talks about how the tech industry has high turnover in general. And it's got several points there that it, it talks about um, some companies and their tenure and, and showing that how, uh, how that's really down. And I can't wait to begin to measure uh, as we become more stable our tenure so that we can compare. But if you look at these organizations, they're much older than we are. So it's a little shocking that their tenure is low, but it shows that the technology um, arena has high turnover in general. The second article really does that has the same message. It talks about 2016 and, and technology having high turnover and what that means to people ops, what that means to, to the company. And the third article um, breaks out voluntary and total um, across industry. And if you look at that, that uh, charts, the both charts, we are lower than all other industries that you, you know, can compare yourself to. Utilities, we don't compare to utilities. That's the lowest one across the board, but we don't compare. But we, our annual turnover in both voluntary and total is lower than all of the other industries that are offered here as options. Again, I'm looking for technology companies, specifically tech startups. I would like to, um, I have some global numbers, but again, because we're a remote organization, it makes us a little bit different. So I invite you to, to uh, send me links anytime that you find something that you think might be good reading or, or a good comparison point for us. I will exit sharing now and I will go back here so I can see some chat questions. Jim, do we have a lot of first time managers? What are we doing to help them succeed? Great question, Jim. Um, yes. We actually have um, a lot of first-time leaders in the organization, and Abby and I are in the process of developing a manager's forum where we're going to get people together that are managing people, and we're going to talk about some of the challenges. Some of the normal um, people ops things that we'll offer are um, uh, courses and, and discussions on giving and receiving feedback and and. Um, managing performance, those kinds of things. So we're, we're gathering topics and we expect to start that from the second half of the summer uh, to the fall. Hopefully that answers your question. Um, Robert Spiker, you mentioned how difficult it was to find comparable tech uh, turnover data in tech companies. Um, as we are a leading tech company in terms of openness and transparency, why aren't we publishing our data? Because I just finished it. So that this intention is, um, to, to publish it on our, uh, on our site and then begin to be able to compare to others. And, and, and I'm very proud of our turnover at this point. Um, I wanted to make sure it was stable. I wanted to make sure I understood the information, wanted to make sure that, that we had vetted it well. So we will publish that. I don't have a problem at all with that. Mitchell 
Liz, have you seen any trends from people leaving voluntary during exit interviews? Of the, of the uh, six that we have of voluntary terms, I don't have a, a trend yet. Um, there, there, people leave for, and there always will be. You can dig down, but what I find, Mitchell, is if you react too quickly, you're reacting to a specific set, and then you create an issue because you start to focus on something that brings um, maybe that to everybody's attention where it wasn't really an issue, but for one person. So, no, I'm not finding uh, things you look for. Is it a management issue, right? Um, what is the... the um, uh, what is the saying? People leave managers, not companies. Well, you know, you look at what, you know, what that manager did and why that person left. And it's not always a true statement. Um, in, in most cases, it's not a true statement on our end. Um, and that's a great thing, right? We have great, a uh, great management team. Um, and in front of me, I don't have the, you know, the, the data, the other reasons, but no, I did not find any trends. Are there any other questions? This can be a really controversial topic. It can be a, um, an exciting topic. It's certainly um, one that we are really focused on in PeopleOps and will continue to focus on. And I promise you that as part of our reviews going forward, at least on a quarterly basis, we'll report out to you what the turnover is. And Robert, to your point, I have no issue uh, reporting out what our turnover is and what we're doing to, uh, to, to focus in on the areas that we need to. All right, any other questions? Thanks very much for joining today. And we'll be back to you in a couple of weeks with another uh, PeopleOps update.